I've called you to this meeting <laughs> to discuss <laughs> my my B freshman year that I received. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm good. What about you? I'm doing all right. I yeah, it's kind of weird the it's weird that I haven't seen you in six years, seven years, six years. Has it been that long? Wow. I know because it feels like we just stopped talking to each other yesterday. Right. I mean, and I and I was I was when I was when we were planning when I was saying that I wanted to, you know, talk spend some time talking with you, I was like, well, Mr. Durning was my was my advisor, so he was like my my OG therapist before I actually started going to <laughs> to therapy and my college <laughs> like I was able to like sort of work some things out doing a little arts hearts smarts with you. Right, right, right. That's how I Yeah, if in case anyone out is out there listening, as an advisor, I would sometimes say, let's hear just a little something about your arts, your hearts, and your smarts. I didn't make that up about Wallendale, but it was a quick way of, you know, getting out Checking the good in. Yeah. And okay. like in in a nice warm brownie too. It was yeah. always good. Yeah. So why don't we do arts hearts smarts really quickly? <laughs> Ooh, I like how you did that. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, yeah, sh that, that sounds good. That sounds good. Cool. So, um, I mean, I, I'll follow you if you'd be all right with that. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I should do one of those three. Yeah, or we could go back and forth maybe so that we, we go could, back and know, forth. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. So how'd you say that? Arts, hearts, and smarts. So yeah, let's. That's the order. The arts. Okay, cool. Art for me. Um, hmm. You know, so I guess arts and hearts sometimes naturally um, coincide. You know what I mean? Um, they sometimes yes. exist in the same place. Yes. Well, you and I actually haven't caught up since I, you know, was on tour this past year. I was in San Francisco doing Hamilton and that shut down. So oh. we're doing like a, a full a full arts recap but that shut down from because of covid and oh that's too the, bad the whole broadway did you shut get down. to do yeah. it first though did you get to do it for a while so yeah so yeah i, I was um oh wow i'm so excited to be catching up with you i'm sad that it's only a little bit. um so yeah i was covering i was understudying um thomas jefferson and lafayette and lawrence phillip and mulligan madison so i had gone on for two of those roles um, before the shutdown, I'd gone on for Lawrence Phillip and um, Lafayette. Uh, Thomas Amazing. Jefferson. And it, yeah, I mean, it was awesome. It was a dream. And um, I, yeah, it, it was incredible. And everyone was so supportive in the cast. And it was just that taste that made me feel like now mm. I'm aching to come back. But, um, you know, the telethon, working on the telethon has been sort of this major artistic endeavor um, reminding mm. me of sort of how I was consistently grinding at Walnut Hill and coming to you and crying about how stressed out I was because I was consistently <laughs> grinding at Walnut Hill. So that's been artistic and I'm working on a little cabaret performance for um, the end of February. So that's been my most recent artistic endeavors right now. Follow up. Uh... How, is it possible for people to see this cabaret thing on Zoom or whatever? It's just going to be yeah, live. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, we're plugging. Um, yeah, y'all should check it out. Um, it'll be live streamed. Uh, go to <laughs> go to come on, Mister Dana. You hooked me up with that plug. That was very nice. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> that was kind of um, yeah. Go to go to um, check out my Instagram, Justin B Show, and I'll post um, the info there. It'll be February twenty seventh. The live stream for the cabaret. Oh, yeah. Excellent. That'll be Excellent. kind of exciting. Um, so you, sir, what's your art heart, art life like right now? Well, um, I would say I currently I'm a member of three writing groups, actually, which I started, uh, which are personal essay writing groups. And we do it all. They're people really across the country, but people who knew each other in the past. Wow. And we write. You write each month, you write a, a short personal essay in response to a prompt, the same prompt, and then you see how the other people did it. And then you comment on everyone else's and, uh, and you keep it positive. 
and it really forms a nice community. And it's a way of staying in touch with people. You know, sometimes it can be hard to write letters or to call, but this gets a certain kind of person to do it. And uh, wow. so it's been a great way of staying in touch with people. Also, in, you know, in scouring my past life for meaning, which can be a little bit uh, 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 emotionally difficult, but yeah. no, it's, it's yeah, basically. I also, I've been drawing a lot. Uh, I mostly on an iPad. Um, and I even took a class, a, fr a friend of mine who teaches high school, I said, I want to do all the same assignments. We ended up with a little section of students outside of the regular students. And it was called a sketch a day. Anyways, great. So I've been doing a lot of drawing. Wow. wow. Wait, like, is there any sort of drawing that you think is especially hip? You don't have to show it, but like, could you describe like one that you're like, oh yeah, this was a hip drawing I did. Or you could show it. I would love to see it. You know, I've got it right here. Uh, because I've been working on it. it. I just started, but you know, I was thinking what poem am I going to read if I end up reading a poem, which I might not because we have so much to say to each other. But <laughs> well, well, I think we'll also do the poem. I'll shut up. <laughs> so that we well, can uh, my latest little project is I'm going through poems that I like, and then I, I'll see one and I'll want to do a drawing that involves like some image that comes to me in response to it. Mm -hmm. And the poem that I want to do is this poem called Making Peace by Denise Levertov. And it's, uh, anyway, so here's the drawing. We'll see if the camera can pick it up. Okay. Are you seeing this? Up a little higher, yep. Okay, I see. Right there is great. Yeah. It's, it's in the old days, when you took English, there's this thing you did, you diagrammed your sentence, and you put it, here's wow. where the, the sentence goes, and here's, because the poem is saying, how are we going to have peace? We've got to invent a whole new language for ourselves, you know, or something like that. So it's about mm -hmm. language, but this this new language in the world of peace, there'll be a, a nice place for the for the mockingbirds and the gross beaks and the and the flowers and stuff like that. So yeah, that what does it say there at the bottom? Forest of a forest? oh, and that's a quotation from the poem. The last few words of the poem are facets of a forming crystal. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back to that because I because I'm now drawn in fully to what the poem has to say. <laughs> good, good. so cool okay cool. On, on to hearts on to hearts um okay um <laughs> it's just crazy to be catching up with you i, I my heart is a little bit aching right now to be oh. in, that, in that sort of melancholy um but happy way that you know I, i'm having trouble articulating it it's, it's, um, okay let's see where my heart's at right now um so Telethon is happening on Valentine's Day, and I do have a Valentine, Mr. Durning. I have a boyfriend. Um, nice. And that is a real um, new chapter. It's the longest relationship I've been in, um, and not very long, you know, five, six months. But um, And I think you you know, of my Walnut Hill relationships and, and the sort of fleeting nature of those, uh, you, you may remember, hopefully you've forgotten them. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, it's really, I'm learning that whole cliche about learning a lot about yourself, I guess is a cliche because it's universal. Uh, Cause I really feel like I'm learning so, so much about myself and sometimes it's not so pretty actually sometimes I, you know it's things that i have to sort of sit with and be like wow this is you know some baggage that you bring to to being with some other you, another person in a romantic way um also i guess the with the intersection of heart to art is that i really really miss performing in live theater um it's, it's, you know, it's a journey that goes like this. And I really have some highs where I feel like I'm able to um, keep without defining myself uh, um, through my artistic endeavors or lack thereof. Um, but um, yeah, it can be really hard. So it's sort of a daily meditation to try and, um, you know, be, be, be all right and be more than all right, be happy. In, in this in this sort of weird time. So that's where my heart is right now. Okay, quick response. So happy for you about the relationship. 
good a good way to focus in on how educational relationships are really yeah. important parts of your education and you're right all I'm doing that and uh really happy for you and um and about the other thing, I can believe that this time must be so frustrating for you. Because, you know, actors got to act. Artists got to art. I don't think I intended to cry, really, <laughs> during this interaction. Or maybe I knew that I might. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, and all, you know, in general, like, because of the social distancing and stuff and people have to be with each other live you know they have to be in the same room with them they gotta freaking hug each other so it's really hard and sometimes in ways that we might not notice all that much but i think for someone who's really if they're not acting they're not working if they're not working they're not living i'm i know that's how you are that's how a lot of people at walnut hill are and so that's really tough so good for you for keeping it together as well as you are yeah and for pulling it together to do this gig, you know? <laughs> so what about you? Where's your heart at? Well, uh, I'll say I love being retired. I love feeling like I don't have to hurry through every darn thing, which is kind of how I've always felt when I was working. Congratulations, by the way. I kind of feel ashamed that I haven't spoken with you since your retirement, but I'm oh, so no, happy no, for no, you. No. Thank you. Thank you. I am doing, I will mention this because it is a hard thing. Uh, but it's the one way I'm still being an educator. I am, um, for the last year and a half now, I've been tutoring a high school student at a local public high school, uh, a student who has severe cerebral palsy. Hmm. Um, the only way he can write is by uh, blowing into or inhaling from a straw that tells the computer, the computer thing where to go. And wow. it's very, very laborious. Um, wow. And, uh, Occasionally I've gone in to be kind of an aide if his regular aide isn't there. He's got a whole team of like a half a dozen people helping him through high school. Um, but it's inspiring. He's such a great guy. Like everyone who knows gets to know him loves him so much. And he's got a great sense of humor. He's great at understanding things and being able to answer objectively. But to get him to think on paper, he's like, yeah. stop torturing me. So it's a good challenge for me. And yeah. anyway, I love the guy. And that's where the heart comes in. Yeah, well, in, in I guess in some ways to to respond uh, just quickly is like, it, it, I imagine for you that it might be like, if he, if he feels like he's being tortured at a certain point, for you to kind of not let up and him, here goes my headphone, and want him to, you know, continue to press through. That could, I'm, I imagine that could be hard at times. Yeah, yeah. A lovely, lovely work. Oh, cool. Um, so smart. I mean, this will be pretty quick. I think this was also, and not at all to diss any of my lovely, of course, academic teachers at Water Hill, but this is always my sort of quickest subject. I, I think <laughs> it is sort of, um, you were a very yeah. good student, so everyone listening know that. Yeah, I was pretty awesome. I think actually in school, which is yeah, I think that came from my mom's pressure a little bit, um, but. Um, I guess smarts. What I, I've been reading a little bit more than I usually um, than I usually do. Um, I'm a really slow reader. Um, I think I might have talked with you about that in some of our classes, like trying to get the assignments and get. I still am a pretty slow reader, um, but I'm reading this um, book. Um, Not all boys are blue. Uh, I wish I were could remember that. I'm not going to get up and go get it right now. Um, but look up, look up this book if you're watching, and then you know, Mr. Turning, you can look it up also if you want um, to know the author's name. I feel badly that I can't say his name, but I just started it. It's sort of a, um, a glimpse into his his life, autobiographical, his life as a black queer boy into teenager into young man, um, and so far the similarities. Um, of his coming of age, um, I find to be strikingly similar to my to my life, um, and it's just bizarre because also I've been reading a lot of James Baldwin over the last like three years, and sort of moments where we would get either a fictional glimpse into his his life or his world, like those also felt really close and intimate to me, and so I'm sort of grappling with what is this 
because we all you know with James Baldwin he lived in you know different a different generation time entirely so what is it about these identities that makes like sort of these social interactions with people like so similar over throughout time or like what is, is what I'm sort of so yeah so I'm really grappling with black queerness and, and how 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 I'm living it and how others have lived through it you know and then break wow it. wow you are doing such great stuff yeah I'm trying to as again it's trying to you know keep you know some parts of me active during this time this you know odd time it's just an odd time I can't <laughs> put it any other way I guess so where's your smart app? Uh, let's see. Um, for you know, I went to Kenyon College as an undergrad, and they have an alumni book group that I'm taking part in. And I we're reading a book right now called uh, "The Vanishing Half: A Vanishing Half" by Britt Bennett, uh, uh, African American woman. Who uh, mm -hmm. the book is about these two very light colored black women who are twins and one of them decides to pass as a white person. Wow. And, um, and it's, it's quite a good book. Vanishing. I think I've heard about this actually. Yeah, I think it's kind of a bestseller. But um, yeah, it reads really fast and easy, but it also it's such, an, it's such a lens at, at racial dynamics as well without it being belabored, but you know, very much there. Yeah, really good. Um, uh, and well, that's all I'll say for now because we, we have other things to do. I mean, I don't mean to sort of dominate the conversation. Not at I all. Would love to hear, I would love to hear your poem, the poem that you were sort of. Oh, no, that's, not, that's not dominating. That's giving me the gift of being able to share this great poem. And I would love to. Shall I? Yeah, I think you shall. I'll just say a couple of things. The poem is by Denise Levertov, who. Uh, Let's see, she was born in 1927 in England. At the age of 21, she moved to the United States and she died in 1997. And uh, she was an activist as well as a poet. Um, and this poem is called Making Peace. In, when I, in the 60s and 70s, when, when she was active, uh, there's there, anti-war protesters had this slogan, uh, make love, not war. Not war. Yeah, and this is sort of, uh, so this is kind of, that's, I think it's a little bit of a play on that, making peace. Okay. It's 28 lines in case anyone wants to know, you know, I feel like you can get yourself adjusted. Oh, this poem's going to be like eight pages long. Okay. Oh, this poem's going to be two lines long. 28 lines. 28. Got it. <laughs> okay. Making peace. A voice from the dark called out. The poets must give us imagination of peace to oust the intense, familiar imagination of disaster. Peace, not only the absence of war, but peace like a poem is not there ahead of itself, can't be imagined before it is made, can't be known except in the words of its making, grammar of justice, syntax of mutual aid, a feeling towards it, dimly sensing a rhythm is all we have until we begin to utter its metaphors, learning them as we speak. A line of peace might appear if we restructured the sentence our lives are making, revoked its reaffirmation of profit and power, questioned our needs, allowed long pauses, a cadence of peace might balance its weight on that different fulcrum, peace, a presence, an energy field more intense than war. Might pulse then, stanza by stanza into the world, each act of living one of its words, each word a vibration of light, facets of the forming crystal. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so, you know, um, 
So I remember at Walnut Hill, sometimes, you know, a student would get up there and do an amazing performance. And then you'd say, uh, you know, whether it was ballet, whatever it was. And then you'd say something, oh my God, you were so awesome. And they'd say, oh, I blew this one line. And you'd be like, what? I didn't even notice. I blew the syntax of one of those lines. Sorry, Janice, uh, that was my one shot. No, it's just okay. She, I think in She Forgives You, did she give yeah. a glance of forgiveness off the camera? <laughs> um, and I certainly do because I was struck by um, restructuring the sentence of our life. Uh, restructuring, yeah, that was beautiful. It resonated with me in some way. Long yeah, just think of your life is a sentence that you're yeah. right as you go. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that it can be restructured, actually. That it's like sort of that agency in it is awesome. Mm, right. Um, and what else resonated with me? The cadence. There was a line that was that was beautiful. Your cadence in saying it was was lovely, and then sort of the cadence of peace. I mm. think was was what it was talking about, and I thought that was beautifully written and set and spoken. And then there was one other thing that I wanted to just recall, which was, um, oh, long moments of pause. How necessary that feels. Like, I, like in the poem, right. And yeah. In the poems. Yeah. Yeah. Like that feels, yeah, that, that feels essential. Like, it, 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 I think it's awesome that the poem, you know, requires that in its delivery, it literally has it in its page, in its in its words. And then also like, in my experience, as I'm learning in my 23 year old like body, like meditation and that sort of, those moments of pause, like are uh, everything, uh, our, our whole, you know, consciousness. So that, 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 that all felt really right. What is, what is those facets, facets forming? Is that uh, sort of your vibration? Takeaway? Each word, a vibration of light, facets of the forming crystal. And would that be sort of your take, your your heaviest takeaway, your most probable takeaway from it? Or is there a line that sort of resonates deeply? Uh, well, you know, I, I use that phrase in the drawing partly because a lot of the language is not very filled with images. You know, it's, mm. it's the language in that you could say is kind of prosy, although I do think the cadence is, is poetic, uh, the rhythm. Yeah. But um, so that's why I pulled it out. But uh, as in terms of my takeaway, um, I guess I just loved thinking that, you know, I would love it if we could build our, the, everyone's life, society on, uh, on a new basis that wasn't so profit and power oriented. Mm. But how to do it, it's like overwhelming. But if she says, you know, think of it like this. It's just like, it's just like collectively writing a new poem. Let's everybody start right now. I'm like, oh, I can get behind that. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> one thing, one bite at a time. Sort of. Yes, right, right. One word at a time. One word. One interview at a time, Mr. Showell. One interview, one chat, one catch up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great seeing you. I was just saying thank you uh, to Garrick for making this possible. And I wanted to say to any walnuts out there, if they end up hearing this, uh, that uh, I miss you all. And I hope you're doing, making your way through this hard time as well as Justin is anyway. And, uh, and Garrick. As well as Mr. Durning is. And, and me. And, um, and, uh, and non nobis solum. Non nobis solum. We love you, Mr. Durning. I love you, Mr. Durning. Love you, Justin. Bye, love you, Bye everybody.